Hey there, and welcome back to the deep dive. Today we're diving into something that, well, it affects every single one of us every day. The weather. Absolutely. Can't avoid it. And you shared some really interesting sources with us about a company called Tomorrow.io. Uh, sounds like they're trying to sort of rewrite the book on forecasting. Yeah, you could say that. When you think about traditional forecasting, it's mostly ground radar, weather balloons, government satellites. Nice. The standard stuff. And look, those are incredible resources, but they do have limits. You know, big blind spots over oceans or remote areas. Even thick clouds can block what ground radar sees. Ah, okay. So data gaps are a real thing. A constant challenge, yeah. So Tomorrow.io's mission, from what you sent, is basically tackling those gaps head on using their own tech. That's the core idea, a combination of proprietary technology. Got it. So our goal for this deep dive is to give you, the listener, a shortcut to understanding how they're using their own satellites and uh, advanced AI. To create these hyper-accurate, localized predictions. Yeah, it feels like a potentially significant step forward in how we understand what's happening up there. It really does. Yeah. And their approach, well, it's built on two main pillars working together. Okay, let's break those down. First one sounds ambitious. Building and launching their own satellite network. That's not typical, is it? Not at all. Most forecasting relies on publicly available data. Tomorrow.io decided they needed, well, specific types of data. Things they couldn't get easily elsewhere. Right, or not globally, or not with the resolution they wanted. So yeah, they launched their own constellation, radar-equipped ones, like Tomorrow R1. And that one can see through clouds to measure rain. Exactly. That's a big deal because your standard infrared or visible light satellites, they can't do that. Okay, wow. And they pair those radar sets with microwave sounder satellites. Microwave sounders? What do they add? <laughs> They're crucial. They measure temperature and humidity, but like in layers, different altitudes in the atmosphere, even under thick clouds. Ah, so you get that vertical picture, the atmosphere profile. You got it. Understanding that vertical structure is incredibly valuable for predicting storm development, intensity, that kind of thing. You mentioned their orbits, sun synchronous. Yes, that specific orbit helps ensure consistent global coverage as the Earth turns. They revisit areas at roughly the same local time. So this private constellation fills in those data gaps, oceans, deserts, places without much ground radar. Precisely, giving them a unique, high-resolution data stream covering the whole planet. Okay, so they have this rich, unique data set from their own hardware. That leads us straight to the second pillar. Turning all that raw data into forecasts, this is the AI part, right? Exactly. All that unique satellite data, mixed with other available weather data, gets fed into their AI, machine learning algorithms. So think of the AI as like a, a super sophisticated pattern spotter. That's a good way to put it, yeah. It's not just number crunching like the older models, though those physics-based models are still vital. But the AI finds connections those older models might miss because of the different data. That's the idea. Traditional models use complex physics equations powerful, but sometimes struggle with very local or very sudden changes. Right. The AI can analyze just vast amounts of data, including those unique atmospheric profiles and the precipitation data from their satellites. It identifies subtle patterns. Patterns indicating what? Like a specific storm? Could be, yeah. Maybe a thunderstorm about to pop up in one specific neighborhood or fog forming unexpectedly. Very localized stuff. Uh, okay, so the proprietary data isn't just more data. It's different data that helps the AI see things public data sets might obscure. Exactly. The AI learns from this really rich, multi-layered input. It can pick up on cues, maybe in the humidity layers, or how rain is forming inside the clouds. Which lets it generate forecasts that are more accurate and really localized. That's the goal. Moving beyond rain likely in the region to rain starting on the street corner in 10 minutes, or close to that. In this whole combo, unique data. Right. Smart AI means more reliable predictions, especially for severe weather. Absolutely. Better data, earlier detection. The AI can identify conditions leading to severe stuff sooner and with more precision. Knowing exactly when and where a hurricane hits or predicting flash floods for a specific area mm -hmm. that saves lives, presumably. It makes a huge difference for preparedness, yeah. Okay, this is where it gets really practical for you, the listener. Yeah. Thinking about the real world impact mentioned in the sources. Where are these super forecasts actually being used? The applications are pretty broad. Aviation is a big one. Makes sense, weather's everything for flights. Right. Precise wind storm forecasts, helps airlines plan safer, more efficient routes, avoid turbulence, reduce delays. And emergency managers. Oh, definitely. 
For them, having highly localized, accurate predictions is critical. Issuing warnings, evacuations for hurricanes, floods, even wildfires, positioning resources effectively. Minimizing risk. Yeah. And I'm guessing other industries too, logistics, construction. For sure. Logistics companies optimizing delivery routes. Construction sites scheduling work around rain or wind. Retailers may be anticipating demand for things based on the weather. It's all about using that detailed weather intelligence to mitigate risk, work more efficiently. Exactly. Truly actionable insights. Okay, let's wrap this deep dive up. The key takeaway seems pretty clear. Tomorrow.io's approach, pairing their own satellite network for unique data with sophisticated AI. It really feels like a significant evolution in weather prediction. It really is. It's about moving towards forecasts that aren't just accurate, but timely and localized enough to genuinely help people, businesses, governments make better decisions, especially, you know, as weather seems to be getting more extreme or volatile. Right, which leaves a really interesting thought for you to consider. If you had access to incredibly precise, maybe even street level weather predictions, how might that fundamentally change how you plan your day or your week or maybe how your entire industry operates down the line? Something to chew on, definitely. That's it for this deep dive.